It starts with a story. A miracle cure, perhaps. A man told he had months to live, but then he tries something unexpected. A drug more often used for parasites in animals. Online, his tumour supposedly shrinks. His energy returns. His family believes they've found a miracle. That drug is ivermectin. You've probably heard the word before. It became infamous in the COVID debates. But long before that, it won a Nobel Prize for saving millions from parasitic diseases. Now, the question spreading online is this. Could ivermectin also fight cancer? Or is this just another medical myth? Today, we'll explore the stories, the science and the controversy with a balanced look at what we really know. Ivermectin is a fascinating drug. Discovered in the 1970s from soil bacteria, it became a breakthrough treatment for parasitic infections like river blindness and elephantiasis. For this, its discoverers received the Nobel Prize in 2015. In humans, it's prescribed in certain doses for parasitic worms and sometimes scabies. In veterinary medicine, it's widely used for animals. So how does a parasite drug even enter the cancer conversation? It started with lab studies showing that ivermectin might affect cancer cell growth. Then came a flood of personal stories online and suddenly ivermectin went from an obscure drug to the center of heated debates. Let's talk about the stories because they're powerful. On forums and social media, you'll find posts from cancer patients who swear ivermectin made a difference. One man with advanced lung cancer claimed that after starting ivermectin, scans showed his tumor had shrunk. His family described it as a miracle in motion. A woman with breast cancer said her pain improved dramatically when she added ivermectin to her supplements and she believed her scans looked better because of it. There are also reports of men with advanced prostate cancer seeing their PSA levels fall sharply after adding ivermectin or similar drugs. In one online support group, a family described how a single bone metastasis simply disappeared after several months of off-label ivermectin use. Another patient with an aggressive appendix cancer in Florida reported a 68% reduction in tumour volume within just two months of taking ivermectin and mebendazole alongside his standard treatments. His doctors were surprised by the speed of change, though they couldn't say for sure if it was the drug, the chemotherapy, or both. And in Ohio, a man with advanced lung cancer said that after adding ivermectin and fenbendazole, he saw more than 90% tumour shrinkage in one month. His story has been shared widely, inspiring hope for patients who feel they've run out of options. Others talk about renewed energy, better appetite and feeling stronger than before. Stories that resonate deeply with anyone who has watched a loved one struggle. Now, we don't dismiss these accounts lightly. They come from real people facing terrifying diagnoses. When medicine has run out of answers, families look anywhere for hope. And while these are anecdotes, they can't just be brushed aside. After all, every major treatment breakthrough began with a single patient, a single story that made doctors ask, could this be real? Anecdotes are valuable because they spark curiosity and point science in a direction. But here's the critical step. What starts with one patient has to be tested in many. That's where clinical trials come in. Large, carefully controlled studies are what separate coincidence from cause, hope from proof. So while the wonder stories are important and they may even be right, it's only through trials that we'll know for sure. In the lab, ivermectin has shown some intriguing effects. In cell cultures, it can trigger cancer cell death, known as apoptosis. 
It's been seen to disrupt certain tumour pathways like P2X7 and WNT signalling. Some studies suggest it might reduce resistance to chemotherapy, making other drugs more effective. And in animals, tumours in some models slowed when treated with ivermectin. This is why researchers call it a potential drug repurposing candidate, meaning a drug designed for one purpose, showing possible effects in another. But there's another fascinating layer. Some research suggests that ivermectin interacts with a receptor called P2X7, a channel on the surface of cells that normally opens in response to ATP, the cell's own energy signal. In healthy function, activation of P2X7 can lead to cancer cells dying off. Here's the curious part. In many cancer types, the P2X7 channel is present, but often in a non-functional form, it doesn't open the way it should. That's one of the tricks cancer uses to avoid cell death. What's been observed in some human studies is that ivermectin seems to push this channel closer to normal function, almost like it restores its ability to open properly. And when that happens, it can reactivate the pathway leading to cell death. Interestingly, this effect hasn't been seen in the same way in mice, which may be why some animal studies look less convincing. But in humans, the hint that ivermectin could modulate P2X7 might be a glimpse at a possible mechanism of action. Now, to be clear, this is still theoretical. It's not proven, but it shows us how ivermectin might be doing more than just floating around in the bloodstream. It could be influencing a pathway that cancer hijacks, and in theory, restoring that pathway could make tumours more vulnerable. And drug repurposing has a remarkable history in oncology. Aspirin, once only thought of as pain relief, is now being studied for its potential in reducing colon cancer risk. Metformin, a common diabetes medication, has been linked to improved outcomes in certain cancers. Thalidomide, once a tragedy in pregnancy, became a cornerstone drug for multiple myeloma. Even statins, drugs for cholesterol, are being studied for their potential anti-cancer effects. The idea that a cheap, existing medicine could become a breakthrough in cancer isn't fantasy. It has already happened before. That's why ivermectin keeps showing up in scientific papers, even if it hasn't crossed the line into clinical evidence yet. But here's the crucial part. Almost all of this is preclinical data. Test tubes and mice, not humans. When it comes to actual cancer patients, the evidence is extremely thin. A few case reports exist, often without clear controls. No large randomized controlled trials have been completed to show ivermectin works against cancer in people. That doesn't mean it's impossible, it just means the scientific standard hasn't been met yet. So why has the idea of ivermectin as a cancer treatment spread so widely? Partly it's human psychology. When standard options fail, people naturally look for hope elsewhere. Ivermectin is cheap and widely available. Anyone can get it. And it already has a strange cultural legacy after being promoted and debated during COVID. Add to that a deep mistrust of pharmaceutical companies, the fear that cheap drugs are ignored because they don't make money. And you have the perfect recipe for belief in a hidden cure. Social media then pours gasoline on the fire. A single success story can reach millions overnight. The family who believes a drug saved their loved one wants to share it. Strangers comment, repeat it, spread it further. And soon the story begins to feel larger than life. For patients scrolling late at night, frightened about their future, these stories can be irresistible. They offer the possibility that something simple, something overlooked, could be the answer. 
and if you've ever sat across from a doctor who tells you there's nothing more we can do, you'll understand why people cling to those stories. Sometimes a sliver of hope is more powerful than statistics. So where does this leave us? On one hand, the anecdotes could be real. Biology is full of surprises. Sometimes repurposed drugs do become powerful new therapies. Thalidomide and metformin are famous examples. On the other hand, without controlled studies, we just don't know. For every patient who swears Evermectin helped, another might have tried it and seen no benefit. Those stories rarely go viral. The responsible position is this. Ivermectin is interesting. It deserves study, but it is not a proven cancer treatment today. And this is where frustration builds. Families want to know why more clinical trials aren't already happening. Researchers explain that clinical trials are long, expensive and complicated. You need enough patients, safety oversight, ethics approvals, funding and time. Sometimes it can take a decade before a promising lab result is fully tested in people. Pharmaceutical companies have little incentive to lead the way. Ivermectin is off patent. No company can claim exclusive rights and recoup the hundreds of millions of dollars it takes to run large multi-year cancer trials. That leaves governments, universities and charities to fill the gap and they don't always have the resources or political will to do so. So the result is a frustrating stalemate. Patients pleading for options, researchers bound by the need for evidence, and a system that doesn't reward investment in old, cheap drugs. So, ivermectin and cancer. It might be more than a myth, or it might be a coincidence wrapped in hope. For now, the science is clear. It shows promise in the lab, but not in people. Still, the stories remind us why patients push for second opinions, for research, and for options. What do you think? Should more effort go into studying cheap, repurposed drugs like ivermectin? Tell us in the comments. And if this video helped clarify something for you, or someone you care about, please take one second to like this video, subscribe to the Second Opinion Network, and share it with someone who might need it. It might be the most important thing you do for them today. And by the way, if you'd like more episodes like this, where we try to balance powerful personal stories with what the science really says, let me know in the comments. Your feedback helps us choose what to explore next. I'm Peter, and this is the Second Opinion Network. Until next time, stay informed, stay strong, and stay supported.